the Independent Investor Channel, I have not one, not two, not five, not 10, rather 96 dividend stocks for you to buy in January. We're going to drop you into my M1 Finance dividend portfolio. You're going to see what a dividend growth portfolio actually looks like. I'm a buy and hold investor. It doesn't mean if it's January or December or March or May, when and how you should buy a specific stock. It doesn't matter. We need to stop with that uh, idiotic way of talking about wealth building and personal finance. You'll see the performance of this portfolio has absolutely stood the test through some volatile times in 2022. I'm super excited with the dividend renderings that I get paid almost on a daily basis. There's 400 renderings a year that'll come from this portfolio. Uh, so just like in true independent investor fashion, I deliver the goods. And while if everybody else wants to find those five stock picks for the month of January, uh, good luck in finding some actual bottom line success because for me in stock market investing, it's all about the money, baby. It's all about the money. Uh, so you can go and screw around and play and do whatever you got to do to entertain yourself. If you want to actually make bottom dollars, pay attention to what I'm talking about. You might actually learn something in the benefits of investing the way that I do passively and in good quality companies that have paid dividends for many, many decades to investors in those companies. So kick you into M1 Finance and we'll take a review of the portfolio. Well, what the power of social media can deliver to somebody if you're just willing to pay attention. Um, this is uh, the all-elusive success in stock market investing, um, which seemingly is uh, elusive to a lot of people out there that are just trying to find good, honest information. Um, don't take it from me. Uh, for all you visual learners out there, this would be an introduction to my dividend growth portfolio. This is on M1 Finance. You certainly do not have to use uh, M1 Finance as your platform. You can choose whatever platform that you want. Uh, I do make this portfolio available through a very simple uh, click to link. Um, if you do want the portfolio in its totality, be ju please just send me an email, uh, ryan.independentinvestor at gmail.com. I will kindly send that to you, uh, no strings attached. You can uh, peruse that, use it. Um, this is my personal money in here. Um, the account has grown just absolutely phenomenal. Since we've chronicled the uh, inception of this portfolio uh, since December 20th of 2019. So for you guys that are keeping tabs on this, uh, the performance has been off the charts. And you look at the charts here and you wonder, okay, well, what, what, what recession? What's everybody talking about with all the volatility? If you kind of notice here and you go back to December 20th here on the charts, <clears throat> see if I can get it to, to show up here. Yeah, this was started here with about five thousand uh, dollars uh, in the account, and it's grown to to where it is here today to a re very respectable level, uh, all by doing very very little. Uh, this is impressive. This is uh, indicative of what a lot of people could probably resonate. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are selling a lot of hype. Uh, in in stock market investing, and I, I'm here to tell you that for the most for the most part, um, people should be involved in value investing and nothing more. Whether or not you value invest through the indexes or while you invest uh, through single stock is totally up to you. Uh, I do both. Uh, and I chronicle those uh, two philosophies, that of which I, I am a, a huge proponent of both. Um, this is the dividend growth portfolio. It's comprised of uh, close to 100 names that uh, are the best of the best of companies that um, I've hand-selected uh, and I've placed them into the sectors uh, as appropriate to kind of add a little bit of an organization to the portfolio. Some people would choose to break it up and put, you know, large cap growth or, you know, mid cap or small cap growth. This is comprised of mainly uh, all large capitalization companies. Most all of them, if I'm not mistaken, are well over $10 billion in market cap. So well-established companies uh, that pay a dividend and, you know, I don't have to worry about from day to day. I, I stick them in the sectors. These are the ones that I feel like uh, are the very best. So, for example, if I click into healthcare, there's about a $4,700 bill in here. Here's the performance uh, up and slightly to the right is exactly what we want over time. 
and then you cruise down here, and these are the individual names which within each of these 11 slices. This is one slice out of 11. Um, this is the healthcare slice. So all of these companies here are organized in a way that can capture um, the healthcare market in a way that I want to. Uh, done quite well here. Um, not a lot of capital to risk in this portfolio. That's what I like. It's spread out nicely to where if I get, you know, a downturn in an Abbott Laboratories, which is a fantastic company, as well as Medtronic, those are the only two that I have down in the healthcare sector, I can live with that, right? So the, the beauty of this is that these companies are still paying me a dividend um, while I'm I'm waiting for them to turn around uh, and then uh, having other areas of the portfolio uh, perform, um, you know, while I'm waiting for those down uh, uh, equities to, to come back and, and start to, um, to carry its weight. Uh, but if there's always churn going on in here. That's what I like about it. Now, for you guys that are new to the uh, tutorial through M1 Finance, pay attention here to the target allocation here. We're a little bit overweight healthcare because it's just done, done so so well through 2022. It was the outperforming sector. Our target allocation here is at 12, and currently we are at 13.6. Okay, technology, which has gotten so beat up, um, this is comprised of value technology, so it's actually outperforming as well, up above its target of 12%. So you can pay attention here how I've built these these uh, 12, 11, these target allocations. In bold are the ones that I'm disclosing to you now. These are the ones that I have hand selected. In other words, these are the percentage of the dollars when compared to the total overall portfolio that I want to go to each of these respective sectors. Okay, so we've done quite well. Uh, earned dividends over 1,600. Market gains closing in on the $10,000 mark. Can't complain. Net inflows into the portfolio 25,000. Right now, I have this on a dollar cost average schedule at $125 bi-monthly. So, very satisfied with that. Here's everybody's favorite portion of the review, 96 total holdings. Uh, as I told you, uh, as we work down the list here, this is like a who's who of stock picks. Um, this isn't anybody's favorite secret. I'm not looking to uncover the next best thing for you in these reviews. This strategy is contained within the strategy alone, and that is dividend growth. These companies have been known to pay a dividend uh, for going on, in most cases, over 10 years. And in some cases, they are the dividend kings of their uh, respective sectors, uh, paying the dividend for over 50 years. Uh, so, you know, it just puts the chips on my side when I start to review some of these names. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductors there, a little bit of scuttlebutt in my group about Taiwan Semi and the value proposition there. Uh, Broadcom Incorporated uh, with their chip producing Cisco down. I can live with that all day. Uh, and new funds as they flow into this technology space will flow into here. And as I look to grow this portfolio over time, um, it will only uh, look to embolden these positions. Right now, only 14 shares, but as new funds flow into the portfolio, uh, they end up going into those uh, underweight equities and the ones that are down typically. Look at IBM. What a great winner that has been uh, in the portfolio. First time I'm looking at it, actually disclosing to you guys. This is the numbers um, as they break down. This is how it works out. And somebody might say, well, Ryan, you're down 35% in Intel. I can live with that, okay? These, I don't, I don't fabricate these numbers. Um, each of these numbers here represent, I mean, there's 96 holdings in here. I've got, uh, you know, hundreds of dollars into each of these. And a lot of folks out there might be just starting with their first $500, okay? Uh, and this portfolio started with $5,000. So, you know, depending on how serious you are, uh, about getting started in the stock market M1 finance that makes it really, really easy in that I don't have to buy and sell these equities. I just own them for the long term. There's Disney, one of those just targets in the market. Uh, it's been really crushed. Uh, I think Disney's got its uh, its day coming, absolutely. Uh, and we'll stay along the name. There's no way I'm going to sell Disney uh, here. It's a wonderful company. 
and it will absolutely come down. If you were looking to do anything, it would be to buy the company here. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of the outperformers in the portfolio, some are a surprise, some are not. But with everybody screaming and yelling about how crappy the market was in 2022, I can live with this. Uh, and, and the whole idea here by sharing these tutorials is to answer the question, are these results that you could live with? And as I scroll down the list here, you see an awful lot of green. You see an awful lot of companies that are up over 20%. There's Caterpillar up over 30%. Would you have relied upon your ability to pick Caterpillar out of the dust and, and render that 30% and take on an over-levered amount of uh, weighting in your portfolio? I don't need to do that. Just over 1.5 shares in the company. I've got exposure to Caterpillar. That's what I wanted. That's a surprise there with Leggett and Platt. Great company. Uh, a dividend uh, aristocrat at that. Uh, so Leggett and Platt, Costco up over 30%. So some really good performers in the portfolio as I, as I cruise down through the list. Look at John Deere up over 36%. Fantastic performance, looking to get up to our first share. So the fractional shares are being displayed here as to the power of owning small pieces of companies. And for what we justify in this society buying, um, this makes the most sense to me. I'd rather buy companies and, and buy pieces of companies. And it's all relative. You know, if you're a multimillionaire, you can own larger positions and shares. I am not. Um, so I'm satisfied with owning piece of these companies and building my wealth over time. And as we approach the bottom here, you can see a spackling of some Canadian banks here. They've come back nicely. Um, there's 3M down off 30%. I would buy 3M here, no doubt about that. Uh, there's Raytheon Technology, fantastic, up over 30%. Northrop Grumman, look at that, up 44% in the portfolio, and I own a half a share of it. Exciting times, very cool stuff, and the sentiment in the market hasn't even shifted. So I guess the question is, where is this portfolio going to go? Having declared to my audience that I have bought this portfolio the entire way down, if there was a whole lot of downturn in the market, um, I've just bought the portfolio strong. Uh, this allows you to monitor financial markets, uh, buy markets when they're down, uh, and and enjoy them when they are up, but all the while uh, making sure that you're you're staying long on on your program. And M1 Finance allows you to do that. Just a small caveat here: uh, there's not a lot of trading activity, if any, in this. I buy these long, uh, and I own them long. Uh, if you're looking to trade in and out of stock, um, M1 Finance is not the platform for you, and I am not the channel for you. Um, the, I am a buy and hold investor for the most part. Um, I do engage in some swing trading in another capacity in other accounts, but this portfolio is what it is. I buy these companies to own them long, and you can see here over time the value has done nothing but reward me as a shareholder over time uh, as we've approached uh, the time of filming this video here on January 16th, just sitting uh, just over 35000 I've got high hopes for this portfolio going forward, and we'll continue to chronicle the progress going forward. We'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. And fantastic. We've come out of the dividend growth portfolio review. Hopefully you've enjoyed. You can see that uh, a lot of the companies have really performed during volatile times. And um, a lot of people are cranky about the markets or they're exiting the market because we have an inevitable recession, yada, yada, yada. It's the same old song and dance. You have to be steadfast in your program and piecemealing and picking the stocks of the month and making them fit when they might not even fit in your own routine is just a futile effort. Invest for the long term. Instead of investing for an inevitable downturn in 2023, why don't you look at investing for yourself out to 2040, 2050, and dare I suggest for some of our young people, 2060. Makes it a whole hell of a lot easier if you just invest correctly. Instead of trying to be wishy-washy on the stock market and try to pick those stocks that the YouTube community thinks are good or are sexy to sell to people or are the flavor of the month, just like an ice cream stand. Why don't you just get smart with your application? initiate some of the things that I've talked about with regard to diversification, with regard to dollar cost averaging, using the power of a company like M1 Finance to handle your money, to invest it strategically. It's a very, very powerful 
platform as I'm demonstrated in this video. If you guys enjoy tutorials like this and want more, please subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up and notification bell on content like this, leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message with anybody that uh, are looking to get started in investing. They need some fundamentals in understanding what are some of those tried and true techniques that'll work in stock market investing, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what your talent level, you can do it too. These techniques have a 100% success ratio if deployed correctly in stock market investing. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.